I know I just did a video a couple of days ago talking about all of those NXT releases that dropped last Friday night during SmackDown. Like, what the deuce? Um, and talked a little bit about how it sucks on one hand, but on the other hand, it's a bit of a necessary evil that the WWE, Triple H especially, had lost the plot in terms of NXT, its purpose, its reason for being, what it should be designed to do. And I wanted to take more time to talk more about that today because I think some people have started to come to a certain realization over the past couple of days that while maybe the approach sucks, maybe they don't like some of the way that they went about it, um, there's also a little bit of a begrudging understanding that Vince is not exactly wrong here. And, and let's be clear, he isn't. Now, will it make a whole lot of difference? Of course not. But Vince McMahon, for all the stupid things he does now, he was absolutely right about this. Especially if you're talking about NXT, having its two hours of primetime national television each week, and you get a new TV deal and it's not worth that much more than what it was before, and it gets to the point where you're breaking even or it's becoming a bit of an expense to run it every Tuesday night. And then you start getting to the point of thinking, well, if it's going to be an expense versus a profit, do we need to repurpose why we have the expense? If we are taking this and saying this expense is designed to invest in our main roster future is to invest in our overall future, we can justify it. But if it is just there to do it and it's not impacting AEW in any way, it's not helping Raw or SmackDown in any way, like why the F are you doing it? Totally valid question and the right question to ask, to be clear. So when you see he, these reports and hear about these things and talking about uh, Vince McMahon and, and the like saying this crap stops and we need to rebrand and re, repurpose and refocus NXT to more of what its core value should be, I'm on board, believe it or not. I'm absolutely on board. Now, I know you're going to have those NXT hardcore fans that are sad about this. And I get it, because at one point in time, you really, really loved so many things about NXT because Hunter was giving you everything you wanted out of wrestling, and he was giving you all of that under the WWE umbrella with the WWE production values to a certain degree, but you were getting the type of wrestling that you think wrestling should be about. You were getting the type of wrestling that you selfishly, personally love. And hey, that's great and all, but, but let's be clear here. He lost the plot. And he wanted to be this high production value indie fed instead of being a place where you develop talent for the main roster. That is the whole name of the game when it comes to NXT. And that's exactly what the hell it always should have been. Now, there was a period of time where you could kind of mesh the two, especially when you look at some of the ladies and you talk about their four horse women and you, you talk about Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks and Bailey and even as much as I hate her overrated ass Charlotte. Like, they're, to me is a situation where NXT's purpose, aligning with long-term WWE needs and vision, like they all perfectly align. You had these young ladies that, you know, some may wrestled on the independent some, but by and large, relatively unexposed to on a much larger scale. You're bringing them in in their early and mid twenties. You're putting them in your developmental system down at the performance center, and you're teaching them how to be WWE performers. You're teaching them how to be WWE sports entertainers, WWE television personalities. And once they have plied their craft and put in their time working at that and learning some of the things like hard camera side and da da da, then you send them up to the main roster. That makes sense. That's what you should be targeting. Just like several years back, you know, when you look at some of the guys that were down at NXT at different times, and you look at the Big E's and the Roman Reigns's and the Seth Rollins and the Bray Wyatt's and the John Moxley's, the Dean Ambrose's of the world, etc. Like those are guys mid to late twenties. You know, some of them had plenty of exposure on the independent scene, but still pretty young, especially when you talk about like Rollins and Ambrose. So you bring them in, you teach them how to be WWE performers in a WWE way with the thought and the vision of, you know, you're trying to train some of those guys that help lead the company for future years to come. You want to get 8, 10, 12 good high level years out of these guys instead of 2 to 3. Like that's the type of approach that your developmental should have. Those are the types of guys and gals that you should be bringing into developmental. But somewhere along the way, like I said, Triple H completely and totally lost the plot. 
He wanted to book wrestling for him and the fans that he cares so much about the damn aberration. And he totally got away from it. Like, you start bringing in guys in their 30s. And this isn't like Bobby Fish who got released recently. Wasn't he like 43, 44, some shit like that? What in the fuck is he doing in any developmental territory? What are you developing him for? He's much closer to the end of his career than the beginning of it. And I'm not just picking on him. I'm talking about several other guys. Why in the hell is he in your developmental? If you're signing guys in that age range at that time, they need to be signed with the vision of immediately being brought to the main roster. Because you're not going to develop them. There's nothing to develop. They are what they are. You should be bringing them in thinking of, hey, I'm going to bring them up to Raw and put them in this program. I'm going to bring them to SmackDown, put them in this program. And this is what I have envisioned for the 6 to 12 months uh, next for creative. What you don't do is sit there and sign these guys and then have them rot away for years of development. Well, that's fucking stupid. Like I look at Eli Drake, now LA Knight. He's 38 damn years old. He was on Impact for a while. No, Vince doesn't want to count him, but he, he, he was. It does kind of count. He's almost 40 freaking years old. And at least you could say he has more of a traditional WWE look that Vince would like. And he can absolutely talk. He's a personality. He absolutely belongs on the main roster. He has no business in a damn developmental territory. Your developmental territories, you should be targeting wrestlers probably from 18 to age 30, 31, 32. You should be targeting those folks that you could put some time in, invest in them, because you're trying to create your next generation like you once did with OVW, with the Lesners and the Cenas and the Ortons and the Batistas and the Shelton Benjamins and Charlie Hosses of the effing world. That's how it's supposed to work. And even then, when you targeted Batista, he was already pushing 30 when he came into developmental. But in a couple of years, look where he was at. He was main event of fucking WrestleMania. That's how you're supposed to be doing it. You're looking at a guy like Batista and you're saying, damn, I want him to wrestle Undertaker and Kane and all these big guys. You bring in a Brock Lesnar, you say, here's what I want him to do. Here's Cena. Here's what I think he can maybe do. Randy Orton, same type of thing. Like, that's the way a good developmental is supposed to work in lockstep with the larger organization. Think about it in sports, like baseball, you've got rookie ball and short season ball and low A and high A and double A and triple A. You want every level of that organization to be teaching things that tie into that parent club, the big league organization's philosophy and approach, offensively, defensively, pitching staff, whatever. Like you don't want to be teaching them things at the lower level that they'll have to change entirely when they get to the main roster. You also don't want to be bringing in a bunch of people at your double A or triple A level that are 30 years of damn age. Because you're not trying to develop them at that point. They're roster fillers. They're spot fillers. You're trying to use your minor leagues, to my point, to develop your team for the future, to keep your bench strength going, etc. So releasing a bunch of wrestlers that didn't have a lot of future or were too old makes total sense to me. The Bronson Reed one doesn't so much because he was in his early 30s, relatively fresh. You look at him, that's the type of guy you should be looking at and saying, you know what? I'm preparing him to wrestle Bobby Lashley, a Drew McIntyre, a Seth Rollins, a Roman Reigns, a Big E. Like that's how you should be doing it. You look at a guy like him and saying, here's who I'm building him up to face. Here is who I want him to wrestle for the next 12, 18, 24 months. I cannot get down with them releasing him. That made no sense, especially when you look at some of these guys. They have pretty, and gals, they pretty heavily invested in some of them in TV in recent weeks and months, including Bronson Reed. So you can tell it wasn't very well planned out. It was a very impulse decision by a now incredibly, increasingly impulsive decision maker and businessman in Vincent K. McMahon. But it had to be done. Like... The way they were going about this shit is stupid. And to those that say, oh, I love that from like 2013 or 14, 2017 or 18, NXT was awesome. It was the best. No, it fucking wasn't. Just because you selfishly liked it doesn't mean it was the best. It absolutely was not the best wrestling out there. And why can you say that? Because it didn't have the most viewers and it didn't make the most damn money, period. That's the only thing that matters when you're talking about a business is the damn bottom line. Like for those of you that might have said, well, NXT is better than AEW. NXT is only better than AEW because maybe you enjoy the style of NXT more, the presentation or some of the talents that are there. 
It absolutely is not better than AEW from a business model standpoint, in terms of pay-per-view buy rates, in terms of viewership, performance in the key Meltzer demo. It is absolutely is not, is not a better product, a better brand, a better thing, period. It just isn't. We, we, we lost the plot when it comes to business and the things that matter most. The best brands are the ones that make the most money. The best brands are not the ones that flip and kick in the ring the most and you happen to geek out because you get into that type of stuff. Like think about it like this. Daniel Day-Lewis, phenomenal actor. Takes his craft incredibly seriously. Like you know that M. Effer can act. But if I'm a Hollywood studio... I'm not exactly dying to put him as the feature lead in my summer blockbuster. Give me the fucking rock. Who's the better actor? The better actor is the one that a studio is going to make more damn money with. Any studio with brains in their head are going to pick him, talking about the rock, 100 out of 100 times over Daniel Day-Lewis. As they should. Phenomenal actor. The academies, the critics, they all love him. And blah, 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 blah. Talk about Daniel Day-Lewis. If you're going to have more interesting conversation, you go with Alita Leonardo DiCaprio, who has a lot of those same acting chops, but also has some of that sex appeal type of thing, like a rock does that a Daniel Day-Lewis does not. Leo has big-time box office appeal. Daniel Day-Lewis does not. So even if you think Daniel Day-Lewis is a better actor in terms of the art form, in terms of the performance, at the end of the fucking day, you're not picking him to be your headline star your marquee main star for a summer blockbuster. You're going with The Rock or you're going with Leonardo DiCaprio because those are the ones that make you the most money, period. And we got to this point where NXT stopped worrying about the future and trying to build guys into being those that could make the most money on the main roster in the future and just be like, we want to do the best indie fed out there and it's fucking stupid because you can't do the best indie fed because you don't get it talking about WWE, especially Hunter. And then even if you do, in theory, you're so undercutting the whole purpose and reason for being with that NXT brand that you're doing more damage to Raw and SmackDown in the long term. And for those that always want to sit there and say, well, they just bring them up and Vince doesn't know what to fucking do with them and doesn't like them anyways. Well, that's part of the problem. Hunter, as much as anybody, should be familiar with Vince's changing taste and Vince's desires and Vince's wants. So you can sit there in this bubble and do all of this shit with all these guys at NXT. But if you're not doing it in a way that is going to work on the main roster, you're not preparing these cats for the main roster, you're not preparing them to be the type of performers that Vince McMahon wants, then I'm sorry, we can't even blame Vince McMahon for that. As easy as that is, that is entirely, solely, exclusively the fault of Hunter Hearst Helmsley, Paul Levesque. That's his fucking fault. We're getting too caught up in the bullshit and missing the plot because he enjoyed running his own mini wrestling fed instead of staying true to his purpose and staying true to his role. NXT absolutely should be about younger talents, trying to find those people that you could bring in and develop in your system that could be major players for you for the next 8, 10, 15 years. Not the guys that are already in their late 40, 30s and early damn mid 40s. The fuck is wrong with you? Now, of course, it's not really going to make a difference. It's not going to matter. Because even if NXT finds the plot and they ground more true to what their purpose is and what they're supposed to be, it doesn't mean anything's really going to get better or anything's going to change. I mean, really. I look at a guy like Karrion Cross, perfect example. He spent all his time with him down at NXT and he's with Scarlett and they put the NXT championship on him. And then Vince is bringing him up and he's jobbing him out to Jeff fucking Hardy. Like, number one, he should have never went to damn NXT to begin with. If you're signing a guy like Karrion Cross, especially with Scarlett, bring him and his girl along. They should be debuting on the fucking main roster. They have no business in the developmental. That, again, is stupid. But if you're going to prepare these guys and gals and you're going to package them in a certain way and you don't have Vince's buy-in and you don't know that this aligns with Vince's vision for what he wants, then you're just circle jerking and wasting everybody's fucking time, and it's stupid. Now, nobody knows what the fuck Vincent wants at the end of the day, and that's part of the problem. He can change his mind just like that. The older you get, the more impatient you get, and we certainly see that from Vince. You know, it's not just the Vince McMahon of old, it's old Vince McMahon now. Al Davis kind of style. So, in theory... 
the decision to go younger, repurpose, rebrand, relaunch kind of NXT and shift focus to what its core should be and what it's supposed to be about is absolutely 100,000% the right decision. Get out of the damn indie wrestling business game. Get back into the WWE game. Get back into developing WWE people the way that you want. Now, of course, that's not going to work because of Vince McMahon. And now Hunter won't know what the hell he's doing. And you're going to say, well, of course Hunter does. Hunter didn't even put the fucking NXT women's title on Bianca Belair, did he? Did he? Did he? Yet sit there and she's fucking main eventing night one of WrestleMania. As out of touch as you might say Vince McMahon is, and he is, he absolutely is. He had a better understanding of how to position and showcase Bianca Belair than the fucking guy that's supposed to know how to do this crap in Hunter. So what the hell does that tell you about him, Hunter? As far as the line talking about no more midgets and nobody over 30, you know, I get it. Stop signing people in their mid to late 30s and early 40s for developmental. That's stupid. They're right about that. As far as the midgets part, if they had thrown in vanilla midgets or if they had thrown in like the small flippy guys, I get it and I would be aligned with them because that's not really supposed to be WWE style. That's not their thing. Because if you ask like AEW, what's their identity? Whether you like it or not, you know what AEW's identity is. Same thing with New Japan. Whether you like it or not, you know what their identity is, the strong style shit and et cetera. If I ask you what WWE's identity is right now, your answer is either inaccurate shit or you don't know. Because they don't fucking have one. They don't want to be in the wrestling business, but so much of the crap that they do shows that they only want to be in the wrestling business instead of the sports entertainment business, the movie making business. The larger company, the larger main brands have lost their damn plot. In part because the talent that they keep bringing up from their lousy ass developmental doesn't fit what they should be trying to be about what they're trying to do. And it doesn't. And it hasn't for quite a while now. So WWE needs to stop bringing in all the smaller flippy kicky guys. They're right about that. I don't like the term midgets because you could bring in somebody that's five foot eight in their mid twenties and have like a fantastic like personality or charisma. Like you think about it, you're gonna roast me for this, but seriously, like a guy like an Enzo Amori is somebody that you absolutely are targeting in your developmental because they can play a role. They can move the needle in some ways, even a little bit. Like you bring them up through your developmental, then you bring them to the main roster. You need more guys like that and less guys like the freaking Drew Gulaks of the world or the freaking Ricochets of the world. Whoopee, a flipping kick. What the fuck else can you do that a hundred of these other guys that do the same things as you can't do? So I know a lot of people gravitate to the midgets thing and talk about, oh, it's just worried about size. Yeah, I agree with you. Like the business has changed and, and size should not be the be all end all. I agree with that. Because you could be six foot six, 300 pounds, built like fucking granite and have no personality, can't move, can't tell a story, can't cut a promo. I don't fucking want you either. But all else being equal, would I rather have somebody that's 5'10", 190 or 6'6", 280? If both of them can talk or both of them can move in the ring, I'm going to take the 6'6 guy because they're going to naturally stand out. They're going to be more likely to be larger than life. That's just the reality, whether you like it or not. Well, you start talking about like vanilla midgets and the flippy kicky guys, the guys that don't know how to work, like really work, the guys that don't know how to get a crowd emotionally invested, the guys that never bothered to learn how to be characters. They only learned how to be spot crash test dummies because they couldn't get over any other way. Yeah, WWE, NXT, they don't need a bunch of those guys anymore. They need to stop bringing those guys in. They really do. No more Kyle O'Reilly's, no more Roderick Strong's, no more of those fucking dudes. That's enough. Time to shift focus and change directives. Time for a WWE to find an identity. And the only way they're going to find an identity is it has to start at the developmental levels. It has to start at NXT. So they had to make this change. It's not going to change anything. Again, let's be clear. But it was absolutely the right move to do. It's just, I wonder what the hell took them so long. Honestly, 
when you think about it now, what took him so long? 